Antoinette, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me today. All right, so Antoinette, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Let's go ahead and start this. Why did you post that video, the one that was on Ratchet Video Weekly? I'm, we're curious about that because what, what really got my attention is when you kept saying, you know, you were the side uh, chick. And oh, talking about proud, the side chick. Proud, there's the word proud. Proud side beach. Okay, and can you explain that? Okay. Bitch means beautiful, intelligent, successful hustler. I don't call myself a bitch at all. Okay. So, so the reason why I did the video is because I do live a lot on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And people comment up under my video. And this one guy was like, you'll never be first. And if you want him so much, make him leave his wife. That's not what I'm doing. <clears throat> First of all, I am an advocate for side chicks. Just like side, I mean, just like they say, um, Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. side, <laughs> side bitches matter too. Okay, I'm so hold on, hold on, because this is the first time I ever heard of someone be an advocate, and I'm sorry, and I'm laughing because it, it, I've never heard that before. You are so you're an advocate for side chicks. That's what you're saying. Right. So you I'm so there basically. For it. I, I, I'm their commander. Yes. Okay, so you basically what you're saying is you're a side chick activist. Right. The proudest. Right. The proudest. Okay. So, so since you, we've interviewed the first side chick activist, um, could you tell us, and for people that's listening, what made you come to the realization that you need to advocate for side chicks? Because there are so many and they just need a voice. Like I meet them every day since I started this campaign. They're not going nowhere. We're here to stay. So are you worried? about the main chick coming after you uh, by any means necessary, gun, knife, you know, a crowd of, uh, you know, maybe other chicks who's upset with you uh, for, and I'm not just saying you, I'm just saying for those who are participating in being a side chick, you never worry about that. No, I, I don't worry about anything. I don't think I'm worried about is losing weight. I don't worry about nothing. I don't worry about that. I just, I deal with everything accordingly. Like I just, I got to live my life. And right now I'm living my life. Okay. So do you think promoting side chick ideology is good for younger girls? Do you think that? Well, first of all, the younger girls, they need to look up to their mother. My kids are grown. Like I'm doing something for me. This is what I'm doing. I can't save the world. You know what I mean? Mm hmm Well, I understand, this, what you, I understand what you mean. Go ahead. This is something that I believe in. This is something that I like. And the since I've been coming out, a lot of people have been coming up to me. Mm -hmm. Like, they really exist. Like, I can't make this up. They need advice. They need help. Like, for real. Okay, so give me an example. What kind of advice would you give someone? Because, I, I, I mean, like I said, this is all new to me, so I, I'm just... I'm a sponge. I'm taking it in. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, for example, this young lady called me and she said she's 25 mm -hmm. and her married boyfriend is 40 and she got pregnant by him. And my advice was, was to her. I don't believe in abortions, but that's a decision she has to make on her own. And she was like, well, I don't want to trap him with the baby. I said, you cannot trap him with the baby. You cannot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's young and, we, we we just get caught up. She got caught up. Okay. So that's a, let me rephrase the question. Have you ever at, given advice to someone that's asking you about how to be a side chick or a better side chick or whatever? Oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah, they have to, they have to first of all, know their role, mm -hmm. don't their feelings, and don't overcrowd the guy. Okay, like hold on, because as you're talking, like I said, I am a person. I'm going to take down notes. I'm learning from you today. The crowd, I want you to take notes. She's giving us the game on side chicks, so let's go. You say, number one, you say, don't crowd the guy, right? Well, the number one rule is know your role. Okay, I'm sorry. Know your role and shut your mouth. Got gotcha. you. Right, right. <laughs> know your role. Stay in your lane. Okay. When he his wife, let him be with his wife. When he's with you, enjoy your time with him. All right. So what's it asking? Do you know your role, know your position? That's a side chick, which a lot of these chicks today, that side chick game, I, it's gotten out of hand. So I want to hear number two. What's number two? The number second. two is 
stay in your lane. Like I said, stay in your lane. Okay, so know the rules, number one. Stay in your lane is number two. Because like I said, we're going we to expound on these points. What's the third thing you, you give them advice on? Uh, I would just say, like I said, don't try and crowd the guy. Because first mm-hmm. of all, he goes through a lot of things as it is at home. <clears throat> first of all, let me just say this. Unhappily married men, those are the best married boyfriends. The unhappily married men. So a lot of people think that I just sleep with married men and this married man. No, it's not. No, I'm just basically a voice for bitches. Bitches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, th- th- I'm going to say this much. I-, I was in a marriage at one point in time, uh, my first marriage, and I'm going to say the last two years of it um, was not good at all. I was very unhappy, but I'm also a person who's very uh, you know, committed to my children, uh, a person that was not go out and do that sort of thing, but I, I get, I'm a can get how some dudes go out and do that, you know, to a point. I'm not saying it's right, but I can get why some people can do that. But also, you put yourself in a peculiar position as well, dealing with a lot of craziness. So, uh, number three, don't crowd the guy. What's number four? You have number four? Well, I really don't have a list. I mean, like I said, okay. I live my life accordingly. Okay. Cause now the reason why I'm taking this down, because I'm learning from you, the, the, the ideology of a side chick, what they need to do, and how it can actually make me better as a commentator uh, on these videos when you talk about side chicks. So, now, how did you get this way where you said, okay, your kids are grown? Now, upon our investigation uh, on some things, some interviews you did in the past, uh, you stated you have five kids, correct? Yes. Five kids, and upon also we found out five kids and five different men. Yes. Okay. Now, how did you, were these relationships like? Hey, you're my boyfriend. You know, we just had a child together. Just looking for love in all the wrong places. That's all. Looking for love. Looking for love in the wrong places. So, what would be the difference between looking for love back then and produce five children from five different men, but now you're advocating? You know, being the advocate of us, you know, being the, for the side chicks. I just think I found love with my married boyfriend. That's all. So you know that that's not going to last, correct? It, it'll last as long as I want it to last. And you sure you sure about that? I'm positive. I call the shots. And he made you think that. He made me think that. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, you know, he. I feel it's it's, I can't speak for the other. Um, no, no, no. We we just talking. We just having a conversation. That's our interview conversation. A lot of times, as men, we play a lot of game, and we make you think you're in control of something. But really, we playing the whole the whole thing. That's what I'm saying. Him being married, how are you really calling the shots when you said that you got to know your role and stay in your lane? You really playing controlling nothing. I'm playing the game too, and I play it wrong. Mm-hmm. So basically, you cool. You cool with like. If he if he got an hour, you cool with that? Hey, I have daddy days. Don't you know I have daddy days? No, no. What is daddy days? Explain that to me. What's daddy He's, days? I have daddy. So I have daddy days. Like we have days where we go out. Mm-hmm. We have fun together. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. How How is your relationship with your father? Uh... I met him when I was 28. My mother had me by her stepdad, so he's like my step-granddad. It's no relationship. Okay, so you never had a relationship with your father. Do you think that it maybe had um, an effect on maybe how you view men in a way? It got a lot to do with it, but I don't somber on that. It is what it is. No, no, no. I'm not saying that you live your life worrying about that, but I'm saying that that maybe it has some sort of effect the way you look. So, because you said that you're looking for men, looking for love, and you look for them in the wrong places for the five men that you had children with, and, and mm-hmm. I understand that. But now you say you're doing the same thing at I don't know your age. We're not going to go there. Um, so it seems like you're still looking for that love that you have never found, and I don't. Yeah. You, do you think you deserve to be with someone that's going to love you every day, that's going to be with you, not on a daddy day, but a every day, 24-7, 365? Do you think you deserve that? I, I probably do deserve it, but the way my life is going right now, the way my mind frame is, I'm cool with what I'm doing right now. I'm cool with today. I'm cool with what I did a year ago mm-hmm. when I met the man. Mm-hmm. So you said probably, so probably isn't a definite answer, but I think just me personally, I think, I think you should 
uh, every person deserves somebody. Okay. And I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there for everybody. Um, but you, I, me, I could not even live my life like that constantly. I know you're probably cool with it, but do you think that maybe it's just something you got used to? Like maybe you think um, a proper, let's say, relationship or even maybe one day a marriage, you think that's like so far-fetched? I almost just cursed this. Never. I don't want to get married. I'm cool with him. I'm cool with my role. Mm-hmm. I'm cool with what he got going on. Mm-hmm. I'm cool with my daddy days. I'm cool with what I got going on. Like my dress, I love my married boyfriend. This is for real. This is not for play. This is for real. Waking up all the side women out there and all the unhappily married men. That's all. So what criticisms have you received from women? Because I know you received a lot of criticism from women. Um, I had on a shirt that said, he's married, but, and the back said, he's not your husband. And I got into it with like five or six mains. And they was, they was upset. They was like, well, who husband he is? I'm like, it's just a shirt. Do you want to buy a shirt? She was like, nah, I'm the only one. I said, well, okay, if you think you're the only one, okay. I just feel everybody cheats some kind of way. And I would rather be daddy side, proud side, bitch. I got PSB. I'd rather be his PSB. <laughs> You know, you know what, Antoinette? This is about the most interesting. <laughs> this is the most interesting interview I've done so far. I can honestly say this because it, I could just talk to you for hours about how you get to this mindset. Now, on top of on top of all the side chick stuff, right? On top of getting into it with you know other other women, and you say about the your children and things like that. Have you ever anything happened to you traumatic growing up? Possibly. Yeah, a lot. I mean, I was molested, you know, by five men in the family that I was adopted in. I was born in California, and I was raised in Atlanta. And in that family, it was like five guys known as my uncles. All of them molested me. So you can call that tragic. But I I, I think I'm overcoming that because I write a lot. I write a lot of pain out. So that's how I deal with my stuff. I write and talk. So, so on top of being a side chick uh, active activist, proud, I'm a, I'm a, proud, look, let's, just let me say it's proud side beach, okay? Because you got it's different side, it's different sides. You got sad side, mm-hmm. you don't want to take the main place. I don't want to do that. And you got basic side bitches, and you know those are the ones that that just go with the flow. And you got denial sides. You know, it's it's a lot of different sides. I'm a PSB. I speak for the proud sides and the sad sides. I'm I'm a teacher class for them. Cause they they making me look bad. They make, they're making you look bad. Yeah, the sad side bitch, we want to take over. We don't we I, PSBs don't want to take over. We know our role. We stay in our lane. I do. 